Tips to help you sell a home. Hi, this is Fernando Reboso with Maxus Realty Group, reallynicehomes.com. And today, we're going to be talking about the five marketing secrets that can help you make thousands more profit from the sale of a home. Did you know that the way you live in a home and the way you sell a home are two completely different things? You must understand the difference between these two because that is really what's going to determine whether you're successful or not. As an example, when you create all this marketing effort to bring one single buyer to your place, to the place you're selling, the first impression is what counts in many more ways that you may even realize. This sets the tone for the buyer's visit and they are long lasting because the first impression is what's going to determine if they buy it or not. It doesn't matter how much marketing you do in a house. If you don't have a good first impression on the house that you're trying to sell, the two must work together. So let's go to the marketing secret number one. We're going to talk about that there is no such a thing as luck in real estate. You sell it on your own marketing efforts and persistence or you watch that listing become expired months later. The marketing secret number one it involves hiring an army to help you sell and let me explain to you what I mean hiring an army to help you sell your property. It is a fact that 94% of all homes that are sold by realtors. So whether you sell your home yourself or through a professional, you must be able to attract the realtor community to your home. I mean 94% are really great ads, wouldn't you agree? So this is the reason why I think one of the part of the marketing that you're doing in a home should be concentrated and very focused towards the realtor community out there because they have most of the buyers. I see many people making this mistake, you know, and don't shine these agents because you need to embrace them. On the contrary, you need to embrace these uh, realtors because they are the ones that are working the trenches looking for buyers to sell your house, to sell the house you're trying to sell. And you also need to compensate them accordingly because I can assure you, it's not easy. You know, once you find someone, making sure that they qualify, making sure that they have the approvals and everything have also in the mindset to be able to be homeowners and go to the sequence of events that gets to the point where they're knocking on your door or they're coming through your door to find the perfect home for them. It takes a lot of effort and for that reason I think all realtors should be commended and should be compensated accordingly. So this takes us to our marketing secret number two. You must understand that purchase decisions are emotional and not logical. People never buy homes because of logical reasons. I can assure you that there is very few things people will buy because of logic. You, they must fall in love with something first. They must like, they must do, and they must have something in there that is calling them. And then the logic actually comes later. Later when you start uh, seeing that you made a decision emotionally without really realizing how big of a decision was that. But then the logic is going to follow. Once you make the decision emotional, the logical becomes easier to compensate and approve of that decision because that's what you want. Understand this, that there is a lot of sellers out there when they're selling homes, they're trying to become logical about the price, they're trying to become logical about the market, and they're trying to become logical about how buyers are looking at the house and why they should pay more money than they should, they, this, the, the, the house is really worth. But in reality, the only thing that the buyers want is to fall in love with the house. They need to have that emotional attachment first, and then the logic comes behind. Buyers buy homes because of the feelings the home gives them, the emotional feelings. And for that reason, a house for sale is not going to be evaluated as a house. It will be evaluated for its potential to become a home. And the buyer has to be emotionally attached to this. So to utilize this marketing strategy, this marketing secret, which is control the emotional angle of the house, control the feeling side of the house, 
Only then you can control the sale of the home. And to understand how to control the emotional angle of the house, most of your advertisement, most of the things that you're putting out for the property itself, they have to appeal to the emotional part of the house. Why is it that someone should fall in love with this house? Kind of like a love letter to the future buyer from the seller and incorporate it in all the marketing materials that you're making to sell this property. At the same, at the same time, you want to control the feeling side of the house. And the feeling side of the house not, doesn't really come with just the house itself. It's how they feel living in that particular house, how they feel living in that particular neighborhood, how they feel living in this area where they can go and do this very easily on the weekend. They can go to restaurants, they can go to uh, shopping centers, they can go to the movies, they can go and play, they can go to the park, or they can go walking, or they can go to the gym. All those things are the feelings of the homeowner once they are situated on the house. And the feeling has to be of comfort. The feeling has to be of something that, man, I have everything available around me, and I feel really good about this. A feeling could be as simple as just putting a table and a deck in the back of the house and put maybe two empty glasses of wine and a bottle in between. And that is when buyer comes in and sees that, they can picture themselves one day, maybe sitting on the same very deck, drinking a glass of wine with their loved ones and basically enjoying the weather, enjoying a day with, by relaxing. That is the feeling you're trying to seek on a house. And that is how you should stage the house in the emotional angle and the feeling angle. Only then you can control the sale of the home. Now this marketing secret is one of my favorites because I can assure you, I don't care how much money a person has, you can be the richest man in the world, but I can assure you, buyers are always looking for a bargain. You know, it's something that comes from the fact is that you're buying something for a lot less than you thought you were going to buy it for. It doesn't really matter if you need it or not. It's just that the feeling that you get because you just got a bargain. So for that reason, always think that the buyer who's coming to look for your property, they're always looking for a bargain. So the marketing effort should be construed towards these buyers, towards the bargain side, to making sure that they're always going to respond to the promotions that you are putting in the, about the property. You know, things like price to sell, motivated seller. This is a unique bargain at this price. Act now, won't last at this price. Price reduction. All those things are used to be able to convey a message to the buyer that there is a bargain here and somewhere you need to take advantage of it. You know, obviously every single thing that you put in a, in a property, in the description of the property, it either does something positive or something negative you know, in, in, your, in your effort to sell the property. In this case, these are the words that you need to be using to give them that notion that the buyer is looking for a bargain and they just found it. But of course, you don't want to really want to give them a bargain because you're trying to attract buyers with a bargain, but you attract them only with the appearance of a bargain because if you are selling your property so uh, for so little money, obviously you're not getting top dollar for your house and this is not really going to be helpful for you. If your goal is to attract as many buyers as possible, position the house as the top sell of the neighborhood and watch the buyers flock in. So let me talk to you about how to give a bargain in an appearance of a bargain and the two major differences between them two to making sure that you don't lose money in the process. How to make your house appear like a bargain? Okay, we're going to start with number one which is pricing it well. The price has to be a price that is fitting, fitting of the house. Whether you do comparables, you do a CMA or you even have an appraisal of the property, that price has to match the property itself because if the appearance of a price is way above um, the actual value of the property you are not going to be attracting buyers on the contrary you're going to be pushing them away you will sell the house anyway 
for the price that it's supposed to be selling for. There is no reason for you to be playing around trying to be greedy and trying to get more by pricing it, you know, more and hoping that someone is going to be crazy enough to give you what you're looking for. If you're going to overprice your house for $10,000, might as well overprice it by a million dollars, you know, because you're going to get the same result at the end. Your house is going to sell for what it's worth, not because the buyer chose that way, but at the same time, the appraiser, the buyer's bank appraiser is going to make sure that they are not going to pay one single dollar more than what your house is really worth. We're going to talk about offer financing assistance how to make your house appear like a bargain. You know, this is something they're going to ask anyway. In some cases, in some areas, you know, you're always going to be getting an offer where they're going to ask for 1% or 2% or 3% seller assistance or seller contribution towards the closing cost of the buyers. You know, and some, sometimes, you know, it doesn't look like it's, it doesn't seem like it's fair for the seller. You know, they're having to pay money and giving money to the buyer in order for them to buy the house. But that is something that we cannot control. Most buyers, they have to put a large down payment to buy a house. And they may need some help to help them pay also the closing costs that they must pay when they purchase a home. For that reason, if you want to sell the property and you want to be very, very popular with buyers, why don't you go ahead and offer them the financing assistance they need, you know? So and instead of lowering your price, if you cannot sell it, let's say, at a certain price, why don't you just put, you giving them 2% seller contribution to help pay the closing costs for the buyer. That is going to be a very unique way to uh, give them a bargain, to give them a sense of a bargain to the buyer because you already given them the money that they were going to ask for it anyway and you didn't get to reduce the price. You're reducing it already on something that they were, they were going to offer to you to begin with. So that's another way to make your house appear like a bargain. The other part that is also very important that I utilize is to advertise the monthly payment and not the price. This is something that a lot of people don't understand about advertising the monthly payment because in a way, when someone is asking for a house $600,000, you know, that sounds like it's a huge amount of money, you know, and, 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 and buyers are really not even paying attention to that anymore, whether it's 600000 or 400000 depending on their financial capabilities, how much really they can afford. What the buyer's really interested in is about how much it's going to cost in a monthly basis to buy that house. So they're not really paying attention to the $600,000 price, which is a huge amount of money, but they are, they're looking for the situation where they can pay $2,500 a month or $2,650 a month. So when you are doing the advertising on a marketing effort to bring buyers to your property, Try to concentrate on what the monthly payment will be versus the, what the price of the house is. And to do that, you must utilize a friendly loan officer to be able to break it down about the loan, the type, different types of loan required to buy your house and to give you an estimate of the payments on a monthly basis based on what down payment the buyer is giving. The next step will be to highlight what the competition doesn't have. Another way to make your house appear like a bargain is this, that your competition has to be analyzed whenever you're marketing a home. You cannot just sell a home and say, put your house in the market or put the house in the market and not have the chance to go and see the competition because, you know, if you, the, if you don't know the competition, you're going to be clobbered. Everybody's going to beat you and all these houses are going to sell before the, your house sells. You need to be out there and see uh, what the competition has and what the competition doesn't have. And when you find something that you have and you know that the buyer wants and needs, you need to highlight that sucker as much as you can because the buyer is going to recognize, especially when they're having to make a decision between two houses, hey, that house has a loft or that house has a huge deck or that house has a, is next door to, to the pool. I don't know. Anything that can highlight that makes a difference between a house in the same neighborhood for the same price range from the same size, but the other house does not have. You need to highlight those.
those items. And I, I wanted to repeat a little bit about what I said before when I was talking about, you know, uh, that you need to advertise the monthly payment and not the price. You know, you have to check on the laws of your state, the laws on the areas where you selling the property, because in some cases, you know, you may not be able to do this. But when it's allowed, you know, you need to make your house appear like a bargain by advertising this property. Uh, a house does not cost the buyer, as an example, 360 payments of $2,500 each month totaling $900,000 they will have to pay on a 30-year mortgage. You know, a house only costs the buyer $2,500 per month. A big difference from the $900,000 to the $2,500 per month. For that reason, the, the intention and the highlight of your materials should be towards the monthly payment and the monthly cost to own that house. As basic as that can seem, because it's not something that you are trying to hide something because buyers know that they're going to have to pay $900,000 but this sounds a lot better for them yes I can afford $2,500 a month that don't have no problem with that and the other part will be they say my god I'm going to pay 360 times $900,000 that is a lot of money almost a million dollars but who stays on a home for 30 years I can assure you absolutely that most people are not going to be close to paying the total of $900,000. That's why I think you need to concentrate on the cost to the buyer in a monthly basis. For the marketing secret number four, and we're going to go back to basics because these are basics of marketing. But you need to utilize all the free tools and broadcast it to the world that you have a house for sale. There's so many places right now that you don't have to pay a penny to be able to put a house for sale for buyers to find the house so they can come to you. You have Craigslist, Backpage, Facebook, Pinterest, LinkedIn, YouTube. They have QR codes and Google and there's hundreds more out there. You must use these areas of places where the buyers are looking for homes in order for you to attract them to the house. And then you must utilize this marketing secret that I utilize all the time is you want to force the buyers to call you. And let me explain to you how this thing works. You need to create a one landing page which is an e-brochure that I have for all the houses that I list. I put all the pictures, I put all the emotional things about the house, I put all the, uh, uh, the feelings that the, the, the buyer will experience by buying this house and living in the neighborhood. But I choose the best pictures, I choose the best information, and it's usually about 10 to 12 pages long. And uh, I create that on a, a, a PowerPoint presentation and then transfer it to a PDF and then host the PDF on my website so anybody can open it up and they can see all the good things about this house. So this is my point of sale for me, for my listings. One e-brochure that has everything I want in order for me to catch the buyer. I want the buyer to fall in love with the house and the e-brochure is going to do it for me. Because of that reason, you know, then I'm directing all my marketing to this e-brochure that I want, I'm going to be doing on uh, Craigslist, on Backpage, on Facebook, Pinterest, LinkedIn, YouTube, everything that I do as far as marketing, whether I'm going to be paying for it or I'm doing it for free, is going to go towards people going eventually opening that e-brochure. And then I will never advertise the price. And I will never advertise the price on the e-brochure on or any other flyer that I make about the house because I want the people to call me and that is really the marketing secret number four main main uh, advice is to make sure that you don't advertise the price on the things that you put in because you want the people to call you and let me tell you why you want the people to ask you questions you want to be uh, connecting with people you want people to interact with you talk about your house talk about the house you're selling and you need to force them to call you and the only way I can force the buyers to call me is to ask me hey how much is the house you forgot to put the price on your brochure 
Of course, you want people to ask you questions. You want people to call for the latest pricing, and that is what you should put for the price of the property. Call for the latest pricing, and don't put there 459.9, because for that reason, nobody's gonna call you anymore. They just already they already found the price, and then maybe that's the only thing they wanted to do. But then when you're talking to them, you may be able to convince them that that $449,000 home is, is a lot more, it's the biggest bargain in the world compared to a $400,000 home that they may be looking for. And they should be interested, and they should at least come and look at it. You know, a lot of people and a lot of realtors throughout the years had complained to me and say, Fernando, why do you not put the price? Because, you know, sometimes when I don't do that, people call me, they're all pissed off or they're mad at me because I don't put the price, you know, and I, I don't want to talk to these people that are mad at me because I forgot to include the price on the flyer. You know, and I tell them, you know, if I have somebody who is mad at me because I did not put the price, it's somebody I don't really want to talk to. And that they're really not interested in buying a home. Because the only person that is going to call for the price and is interested in hearing that is a motivated buyer. Put yourself in the position of a buyer and be able to see what is it that is going to take for you to do in order for you to find the price of a house that you seem to like on the outside and say, man, this house is maybe the perfect house for me. It is close to the school. It's close to what I want. It's close to my work. You know, I see a sign and I know there's a flyer here and it's got all these beautiful pictures, but I don't see no price. Obviously, I'm not going to be mad because they did not put the price because they're asking, call for the latest pricing. And that's what I'm going to do because I'm interested in the house. And I'm a motivated buyer, and that's the reason why you should put this in there. But, in, but if I'm somebody else who is annoyed by this, I wasn't motivated to begin with, so it doesn't matter if I'm annoyed or not. And finally, we got uh, marketing secret number five, that you want to sell the house to someone who's more motivated than you, not the other way around. And that is really what is the final result of good marketing techniques to find someone who is very motivated to, to buy the house and, and, and even, even better so that this person is more motivated to buy it than you are at selling the home. So for that reason you must be aware all the good features of the house that you are not noticing but other buyers are noticing about the house. You know, because uh, for that reason, I, I think feedback and interviews are very important on this. Whether you're selling your property on your own or you are a realtor selling the property for someone, you must try to get the feedback and you must try to catch them in an honest way to tell you what is the things that they like about the house and what's the reason why the buyer may not be pursuing to buy the house. Because only then you can turn all these features that you perceive to be good features that the buyers like and you need to change them into lifestyle benefits of living there to bring them in. So you're enhancing all these good things into something which is much better than we talked before about the lifestyle benefits and, and for that reason I think you can use the feedback program to be able to sell your property quicker by fine-tuning your marketing to what the buyers are finding in the property you sell. As an example, if a young, young couple looks starey eyes showing interest on the house, you will most likely have more negotiating power to, to, to be able to get more money from them and because clearly if they're emotionally attached already to the property and they are, they, you can actually see that they already fall in love with the house in that reason, you know, this person may be more motivated to buy the house than you are of selling. You know, as long as you are ethical about the way you do the negotiating with people, you know, I don't think you feel should feel bad to try to get top dollar for a house from someone who may be emotionally involved in the house already. They're willing to pay you top dollar with a smile. You know, that is really what it's marketing about, to try to get the most money for someone and uh, that someone will pay happy. 
That is really the ultimate success story of having a good marketing system to sell a home. So let's talk about what signs do you see when someone is motivated to buy because uh, they're very hard to pinpoint but I can tell you with experience in a, a little bit more detail in observing people you can find out if this person is really motivated to buy the house. You know, one thing I always notice is asking lots of questions. You need to use this to your advantage because when someone is asking a lot of questions because they're really, really interested in the property and this is the thing that you must know this to begin with. Easy thing, easy thing to spot. But then uh, another thing that I, I noticed from all the sellers that I had when I was trying to sell the homes and I sold the homes uh, is that they, they commented to me like in the next day or two that they see the same people they came to see the house driving by that evening or that afternoon or the morning, you know, and they're passing by the house and they're slowing down the car like checking it out again but they don't get off the car. So that means that these people are really, really motivated to buy this house. They're really connecting with the house and that's a good sign. That's another way to know that you have a motivated buyer. The other part is they bring their parents for a second visit or third. You know, that's a good sign if you're getting the same people coming over and over to the house, bringing the relatives to see the house. That is a motivated buyer. You know, if I was a buyer agent, I would not do that, you know, m uh, too often with my buyers because that's going to put them in a disadvantage when the seller sees that I am bringing my whole family to see my future home already before you even negotiate it for the price. Another sign that you have a very motivated buyer is that you find them measuring the rooms. They got their own measuring tapes and while they're looking at the house for the second time, they're already measuring the furniture, where, where they're going to fit or how it's going to fit in the room. That's a telltale for a, for a motivated buyer. Then uh, another, another part is when they're personally asking you, when do you want to leave? Or meaning that when would you like to close down the house? You know, they want to appeal to you. They want to give you the benefit of what you want because they really want the house. That's another good sign. Another sign is their visit is longer than one hour. They don't want to leave the house. You know, I've seen sometimes people and buyers, when I worked with buyers before, a long time ago, uh, that a buyer may stay on a house for two whole hours just enjoying the house, you know, especially if they know that the house is vacant or the house is just staged and no one is going to be coming home. They like to stay there and that's when you actually have all the contracts made on the house itself when you start writing the offer and say how much you're going to offer and this is the time when um, you notice if the person is staying on a house longer than one hour at a time you have a very motivated buyer out there. Another way to tell that someone is very motivated to buy the house is that they always making positive comments when viewing the home. You know, they either uh, uh, exclaiming something about the property that they like or they are uh, talking to each other and uh, using words like I love this or don't you think this is going to look wonderful something like that there's always something positive and that's a good sign for you another way is that to tell when someone's motivated is when they have they make positive sides and other body language at the house you know it's a very easy to pinpoint when someone is really liking what they see by looking at the way that they walk in by look about their their posture they look in the way that they talking to each other and smiling you know and for that reason you know the total, uh, the total result of all these marketing secrets that I'm giving you, which is five marketing secrets to bring that buyer to the house, is that once the offer is received and you know that it's a motivated buyer on the other side, you need to counter it. Don't even look at what the price is. Because, uh, because you know that if a motivated buyer is bringing you up a, a, an offer, you know that they really, really want to buy it. And this is the time when you can actually extract more dollars from the equity of your home at this time because all your hard effort of doing the right marketing techniques, going through the staging and the presentation of the house and doing the brochures and the videos and everything that put together the final moment when this buyer 
really is completely all or the house and they want to buy it, that's not the time to say yes. That is the time to counter it so you can make more money and sell your house for top dollar. My name is Fernando Reboso, reallynicehomes.com, Maxus Realty Group. I am a broker owner for Maryland, D.C. and Virginia. My phone number is 301-246-0001. Thank you and have a great day.